So we recently put out our 2026 graphic design trends video here on the Kittle YouTube channel and you guys have been absolutely loving it. Thank you so much for all of the love and positivity and positive comments, likes, shares. The video is doing really, really well. One of the design styles in that video that I particularly love and wanted to talk about a little bit further is blueprint design. Now, I actually did not really know that this was considered a design style per se until we were researching for this video that Drew did, but I actually fell in love with it because of how utilitarian and minimal it is. And you know, I'm all about those minimal design styles. So let's hop into the Kittle editor and break apart a couple of different designs and see if we can get something out of it. So I've got a Kittle project here with a couple of different templates. This one has two artboards in it and all of these templates will be linked down below available for you. They're just templates in Kittle that you can go and use, play around with, change the illustrations, change the text and just really have a lot of fun with or use for whatever project you want. So right off the bat, we can immediately see the deconstructed illustrations kind of vibe from these blueprint style designs. So typically when you think about blueprint, you think of design plans for a car or an airplane or some sort of machinery or something that's kind of deconstructed and has different lines and nodes popping off of it telling you what the different parts are if you've ever assembled a dresser or a piece of furniture from Ikea you've definitely seen blueprint design before so a couple of the different things that I notice about it like I said one is the deconstructed part which what's really cool is all of these are individual layers so if you go and you uh, interact with some of these different templates you can pick apart these layers you could even use Kittle flows to change some of the assets to things that you would need for a deconstructed blueprint design which I'll show you how to do in a minute you could search in our element panels and see if you can find any of these it's called threshold style designs or outline style designs these look more thresholdy to me because that's basically you took the image and you just summed it to black and then white and then just got rid of one of those colors and it looks very etched and stamped very very cool I've also noticed that it uses 100% time after time uses mostly sans serif fonts. Now this one is a little bit more stylized because it's like an Italian pizza graphic. It has a little bit of more organic font for these little details in here. These, it looks like we're using some monospace type fonts right here, especially right here. I love this monospace font. It's very clean, very techy and digital, but also kind of like utilitarian and modern. Very, very nice. I love the colors and these two it looks like a menu, a vertical menu, which is very neat. You could go in here and you know, change this, adjust this to a different graphic or a different menu of your liking. Here's another one of a deconstructed piece of sushi. And this looks literally like just a poster. Like you could make a very, very cool poster for a client or just artwork or your bedroom or really anything, something to list on a shop. And it's a very neat way of displaying very common objects very dynamically with fun fonts and fun colors. I actually already did a little flow down here, taking this illustration of this sandwich right here and changing it to pizza. So if you want to see the prompt, I said make a pepperoni pizza in this same deconstructed art style. I said deconstructed. I wouldn't say blueprint design because I don't know if it would know what you're talking about, but I would say it's deconstructed. Make a pepperoni pizza in this same deconstructed art style with the layers being pizza dough, tomato sauce, shredded cheese, pepperoni, salt and pepper. And it did it. This was actually the first try. It did a very, very good job. And then you could just take this, convert it to an image. Let's actually just try it. Let's vector this to two colors because I want to be able to turn off one of the colors. So I'm vectorizing this to black and white and it gave me two colors here and I can just turn one of them off and then change the other one to an actual color that I would need. And then we could easily, you know, take this and insert it into our little graphic up here. Match the colors. Amazing. And then using the pen tool, you could just pop over here, boop, you know, hold space to make the lines crisp. One of the tips here, I would make sure that the border weight on these lines is pretty thin, maybe one or two pixels. One seems pretty good. Let's match the color. And then you could take one of these text boxes over here and change it to, you know, pepperoni and then just break apart your different features of your graphic or whatever you've made. You could even add little nodes. I've seen where people have added little circles on the edge of their graphics. That's not a perfect circle. Let's try it again. There we go. I wasn't holding shift. Copy and paste that over here. 
I've seen a lot of people do that with the little circles. It makes it nice and legible to see where the, see you see it in this one, to see where the termination points are on the lines. It really helps with that kind of legibility feel. And the last thing that I notice about these is they're pretty just, you know, monochromatic. It's pretty much two colors mostly. I, I love this blue and white or a gray and white, black and white, green and white. So that's most of what I see. If you want to get crazy, try to add some gradients or a third color, you definitely could. But this is a really, really easy design style to kind of play around with just because it doesn't introduce so many challenges with colors, which I know a lot of people, particularly myself, struggle with color and making things feel feel balanced using color because some colors feel heavier than others some feel lighter and so when you're structuring a design with a lot of colors you have to make sure that they're put in certain places so that the design doesn't feel scrambled and my last tip is just to make sure that you use some of those mono spaced fonts so if you create a text box and you go over here you can actually search mono space and you'll get all of those very, very nice, clean, techy, blueprint looking fonts. This Slig Oil Micro font looks very, very nice. Pepperoni, pizza. I love that with the little ink traps. Very, very nice. Let's just, I could very easily change this one to my nice Slig Oil font right here. And I love how that changes the vibe immediately to feel a little bit more techy and less modern. Or you could say it's a little bit of both. I don't know, comment what you think. Real quick, if you're not already subscribed to the Kittle YouTube channel, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button and maybe leave a like or comment while you're at it. You guys, the watchers, are the only reason that we can keep this channel going and we very much appreciate your love and support. Also, if you have never tried Kittle or have a free account, we have a promo code for you in the description of this video to get a percentage off an upgraded plan, get you some AI credits, some more beefy features, and have you designing like a pro in no time. Well, that's all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. We very much appreciate your support, and I'm going to go create some blueprint designs now. See you in the next one.